So guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run your first React.js app in Visual Studio Code. Now, we don't really run React in Visual Studio Code itself. In order to run React, first we need to install Node.js. It's an open source environment for running JavaScript. So go ahead and head over to Google and type download Node.js, find the official site and select your installation I'm on Windows and I'm going to select the 64-bit Windows installer for my operating system. So go through the installation. I'm going to change the default installation directory to C slash Node.js, but you can install it anywhere you want. Make sure to memorize this location because we're going to need that in our next step. So go ahead and just click next a bunch of times. And once you have it installed, go to the start button and start typing environment variables. Now go ahead and hit enter or click on this open button and on this next screen go to environment variables button then go to the bottom box here and find the path variable. So go ahead and click on the path variable and click on the edit button. So now here click the new button and type your path where you installed node.js which for us it was c slash node.js. So by doing all this, we enable Node.js to run from anywhere on our hard drive, not just from where it was installed. Now let's go back to the start button again and type CMD and hit enter. And here on the command line, that's going to show up. Type node dash dash version to verify that we have successfully installed node on our system. So guys, congrats to getting to this place. Next, we're going to create your first React.js application and run it in Visual Studio Code. In order to do that, we're going to use the npx command with create react app. And we're going to name our app YouTube for this tutorial. Okay, guys, so let's go back to the command line. So first thing you want to do is make sure that you have npx installed. Type npx dash dash version to make sure we have it installed. Now I'm going to navigate to my projects folder by calling CD projects and I'm going to create a new folder called react for our react projects. I'm going to go into that folder and now that I'm in projects react, I'm going to call the npx command to create our react application. So go ahead and type npx create dash react dash app and I'm going to name our app YouTube. I'm going to hit enter. So as you can see, the process of creating a new React app has been started and it's just going to do a bunch of things for us. Now guys, from here on, what you want to do is CD into the YouTube folder. And from this folder to start your React app, type npm start. Now, if at this step you run into any errors or problems, post a comment on this video. But if everything works well, also post a comment on this video. And so congratulations on running your first React.js app in Node.js environment. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our React application in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and open my Visual Studio Code app. And the first thing we're going to do is open this project that we just created from Visual Studio Code. So go ahead and go to File open folder and I'm going to navigate to C projects react YouTube which is the location of this app that we created on the command line so here it is projects react and I'm gonna click on YouTube and click select folder this will open our react project in Visual Studio Code every react project has a source folder which is called SRC this is where all React application files are. So every React application has the main file called app.js and it looks like this. Here you will see a bunch of React components and the cool thing is that if you remove any of these components and save the file, your React app will automatically recompile and reload in the browser. So I'm going to remove everything from this demo React application and I'm going to create an example of a really simple React app. So I'm going to create my own component and type hi inside it. So when I save this, 
the browser will refresh and render this HTML element that I created. And so I'm going to split this React app into multiple components. And I'm going to create a separate height component. So in order to do that, you'll type const and followed by the name of your component with the uppercase letter H. Now I'm going to use a JavaScript arrow function to define that component. So equals parenthesis arrow in the brackets. Now, whatever you put into the return value, that's what's going to be rendered by that component. So here I'm going to transfer this element into the body of this return statement. And so now to use this component, all I have to do is type it right here and type the name inside the brackets. So I'm going to save my file again and it will refresh in the browser with no changes. But if I change the text here, you will see that now this text is being rendered as a separate component that was defined by this arrow function. Now, creating React applications is all about this process of dividing your app into multiple components and making them do things. Now, I'm not going to go deep into advanced React subjects in this tutorial, but I'm going to show you something cool that will get you started. So here I imported the use state hook from React. And so this allows me to use the use state hook in my component. So let's break it down a bit. Here the const keyword will define the value number and a function set number. So whenever you use the use state hook, this is the pattern you're going to follow. First you define the variable name for your value and create a function for changing that value. So here I have number and set number. Now the use state hook itself is what's going to define the default value. So at this point, my number variable is going to be zero, but you can set it to anything you need it to be. So guys, I'm going to output this number value from the use state hook in a separate component here. So I'm going to use brackets and refresh the browser. As you can see, it's zero at this point. Next, I'm going to create a button that will appear at the bottom of this number here. And so I'm going to call it add and refresh the application. Now to make this button increase our number variable, I'm going to create a separate function. This function will be executed every time the button is clicked. So I'm going to type this function directly into the component and create it as const add equals arrow function. And inside this function, I'm going to increment the number by one. And so the only way we can possibly do this in React is by using the set number function that we created earlier. So let's go ahead and use that set number. And we're going to use the current value of number variable, which is zero by default. And we're going to type it in here. We're going to add one to it. Now, at this point, it's just a simple function. So how do we make this function run when the button is clicked? So the answer to that is the onClick event. So I'm going to add onClick equals brackets and simply add the name of the function. So if I use the React application now and click on the button, you will see that the number will continue to increase. And so I know that this is a very simple example, but this is a workflow of creating entire React applications by breaking them down into components, using use state to store all kinds of variables and data and using functions to change that data. Now guys, as you can see here inside the app component, we have our number, but what if we want to display that number inside our other component right there. In order to use data from one component into another, we're going to use props. So here we're still displaying the number in our app component. We're going to display it also in that other component. So I'm going to pass our number state into this component. And to do that, all I have to do is type num or any other custom name. And I'm going to use the brackets in the number variable. 
So now this number value is passed into the high component with the num name. In order to receive it from the component, we're going to add props into the arguments list. And here we can access it through props.num. So that's almost all there is to passing props. And now when I click on the add button, you can see that it's being changed in both places. Now to simplify your code, what you want to usually do is to structure the props. So here I'm going to do something like const and in the brackets, I'm going to type num equals props. So this creates a standalone variable num that I can now use here without the props. And again, if I resave the app and click on the add button, you will see that the number is being added in both places at the same time. So guys, congrats to getting this far. If you're still watching, that means you're learning React and that's good. In my future React tutorials, we're gonna go much deeper than this. So subscribe to my channel or post a comment and I'll see you in my next tutorial.